Hey, John Reed, JWE.com. I'm in Palo Alto, and uh, Jonathan Becker and I, we had a list of questions I submitted. We, <laughs> we just decided to throw those oh, no. out. That's right. <laughs> None of the buttoned up stuff. Let's so, just do so that. what are we going to talk about? So first of all, I think everyone pretty much gets the art of marketing. That's the stuff you see a lot, right? That's the commercials on televisions, the billboards in airport, that stuff. But there's a bunch of science now. In fact, the science of marketing is very much of using technology, using our own technology to understand what trends are going on. Let me give you a couple examples. The easiest example is when you're actually generating demand for a product, there's something that we've always called the funnel. And the funnel is essentially the pipeline. It goes from awareness, oh, I didn't know SAP had a product that did this. There's a lot of problems. We have a lot of products that people don't know about. To the, oh, I know they have a product, but is it really a good fit for me? Or is it only for the biggest companies? Or does it not solve my problem? Mm -hmm. From the, oh, it is a good fit for me. I should consider buying it all the way down to close. And the classic funnel looks like a martini glass. It's right. really big at the top, right. and then you keep winnowing people down until you get to a relatively small number of people at the bottom. Right. Okay. And in traditional marketing, particularly traditional B2B marketing, the people always thought, people always, you actually learn this in school, it's in textbooks, which is just keep filling up the top of the funnel, right. and if you cast a wide enough net, then it doesn't matter how many people convert, you'll eventually get enough people to buy your product. Mm. Right? The mass marketing scenario. That's right. the mass marketing. And that's, yep. you know what? The problem with that, particularly when you start using social media and email, it starts feeling like spam. Right. I'm sure, not just from SAP, but from lots of people, you get all these emails, and like, I don't really care about that. Absolutely. So what we've done, we've completely turned that approach over the head, on its head the last couple of years. And we've said, let's analyze the pipeline. Let's understand, not companies, but people, where are they in each stage of their learning journey and decide what tactics are best to help them move to the next stage. If you're somewhere in the middle, we don't want to send you brochures and emails and invitations to webinars. We actually want to start sending you case studies and ROI or maybe even references about what other people have done. Mm. If you're even further in the study, we don't want to actually probably communicate you by email or on the web. Right. We want to do an in-person meeting, maybe come to you and actually do a closing event. So what we've done is we can understand the strength of the funnel by what country you're in, by what product, by whether we're selling direct, et cetera. We have this very complicated, multi-dimensional system built on our technology, accelerated by HANA using a Bob J dashboard. And we can see now proactively where the weaknesses are. So while my sales colleagues are already th are thinking about Q1 and how much revenue and the deals are gonna close, I'm actually thinking about Q2, Q3, Q4 and I'm trying to strengthen the pipeline for them so that when they go try to close deals, there are enough interested people. That's okay. science. That science, by the way, is correct. Right now, if you show up at sap.com, you and I are gonna see almost the identical thing, right? right? But what's coming, and you'll see a lot more of it this summer, is a personalized sap.com using those analytics where we look at your click stream, what events you've gone to, what webinars you've gone to, what content you've looked at sap.com, we put it all together, privacy concerns, if you've opted sure. into this, yeah. and then we only deliver you the content. We personalize the thousands of things to things you might care about the most. But yeah. If you go to sap.com, we talked about it's not personalized yet. Right. The other thing is, right now it's still largely content that I create. Not right. me, Jonathan, but I, SAP. Right. I envision a not too distant future where maybe only half the content comes from us. There should be content coming from customers, from developers, from partners, from third parties, et cetera. Maybe some of your content should be syndicated right. on that side as well. Because if it's an authentic voice, yes, it needs to be seeded with what the corporate messages are. Because actually people want to know what position we have, but it right. can't be just that. And where people are in disagreement, there should be discussion forums. So I kind of think that the SCNs of the world and mm -hmm. the SAP.coms of the world and the blogs.sap and all those things will probably meld together into one thing, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what it looks like just yet in the like sort of that. a year to two year. Time frame. So in, if you opt in, and you yeah. may not have, and give us some of your information, then we're going to use what's called collaborative filtering to find other people like you and what they're interested in. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever bought a product on, on Amazon.com as the classic example. People that bought this also right. got that. Yeah. We'll use that to then personalize your experience even more because we'll know a little bit more about you. And that's yeah. less likely to happen as time goes on. Okay. B2B versus B2C. So you probably think we've got nothing in common with marketing at Coca-Cola or marketing at Daimler or marketing at Chase. And my answer is we have everything to do with that. That the old, uh, we don't really 
anymore sell to companies, we sell to people. The joke I like to tell internally is big glass buildings don't buy software, people do. Mm -hmm. But the old day, the way everybody in the industry marketed, we do as well. In fact, we're famous for it in billboard ads. All of you have probably seen it is Porsche runs SAP. Right. But that's about the company. That doesn't tell you, well, who did we help inside Porsche? Did we help the finance department? Did we help the mm -hmm. marketing department? Who inside the marketing department did we actually did? So where we're going is twofold. What you should see more from us is much more of the human side of the brand. In fact, we have an internal code word we call humanize the brand, where you'll see launching in March and April stories of SAP superheroes, people that have changed the way they run their jobs and gotten better in a much more consumer-like, and you'll start seeing how our customers help people in the world. Um, 10 years ago when I bought a car, all I really know when I bought a car is I wanted an SUV. I live in California, everybody was buying SUVs back then, sports utility vehicles, right? So what'd you do? Well, it was really hard to get information about SUVs, right? You, the, really, the internet wasn't nearly as mature as it was now, right? So I went to my local dealer, the one that was nearest to my house, uh, I won't say what particular brand it was, and I said, I'm interested in buying an SUV. And he's like, all right, tell me what you want, how much you're willing to pay. Maybe he gave me the brochure. If I wasn't, I could go for a test drive, but I was at that person's mercy. And if I didn't like that particular SUV, I drove down the road and tried to find the computer. And, but it was all about the vendors, the dealers, and their access to whatever information. I didn't know how much it costs, so we had to kind of debate, and that was the entire experience. Two years ago, when I bought another car, it was completely different. I said, hmm, this time I want a sedan. I think in general, I want something that gets this kind of mileage per gallon. I want something that is, has this kind of safety thing. I did probably 90% of my research and narrowed it down to basically two models, right? And I went to those two dealers and I said, here's what I'm willing to pay. Here, I'm not so care so much about color because that's not, but I do care about the following features. If you're willing to match this price, I'll buy from you. Who had the power then? Well, Arguably you did, right? Exactly. Yeah. So what happened is there was a mental shift from them selling a car to me, in the first case, mm -hmm. to me buying a car. Now it turns out one of the two dealers was unwilling to match any of the loose guidelines I gave them, so I didn't buy from them. The other dealer said, okay, if you're willing to give on this, then I, I can meet your number, or if you want all these things here, then you need to give me a couple hundred dollars more, right? Mm -hmm. But I still felt like that I was in control. In fact, I didn't even have to talk to a person if I wanted. I could have bought the thing online, but in general, that supporting that process, I went to vendor websites, I went to online forums, I asked friends and experts, I ran the process over six months, as opposed to have to go into dealership with that classic line that we always joke about, which is, what will it take to put me in a car today? Mm -hmm. Enterprise software is moving the same thing. In the old days, oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In the old days, the cartoon image, it was never this way, but the joke people had in their mind was the sales rep showed up and he or she was in control of all the information about the products. Maybe they brought their SC right. and they did the demo. And yeah. you were at them. It's never quite this bad. This is the way people think. And they had to go to Sapphire to learn more. They had to go that, mm -hmm. that. What we're doing is inverting it on his head, which is everything you want, you can find in your forums, on SE.com. And you're going to get yourself as educated as you want, as slowly or as quick as you want. And then when it's time for you to say, OK, I'm switching from learning to buying to now I want to do a transaction. Mm -hmm. You'll come to us or one of our agents, could be a distributor, could be a VAR, and say, mm -hmm. here's the, right? But if you say, I have to have this price, I have to have these functions, I have to have that, you can't get everything, right? But if you're doing it the way I bought the car, you can say, this is more important to me, this is less important to me, and then the transaction can deadline. Mm -hmm. That's from push to pull. That's from selling to buy. And here's the scary part. And this is why I think the entire marketing discipline, not just SAP, is in for a wake-up call. And that is the old marketing, and this is not, again, not, this is a general discussion about the discipline, not about SAP. Let's say two or three years ago was, there was a product marketing or a solution marketing discipline where you got a bunch of smart people together and you said, let's decide what the most important messages are about this product. Right. The classic example we use in the industry is the iPad. They debated for months about should the iPad, what it should be, and the answer was thin. That's why all the advertising you see for your iPad, you always see it from the side so you can see that it's thin. It's not that it's light, it's not that it's fast, it's not that it's thin is their, their word. And that's what we did. We spent a lot of time debating about is HANA fast or is HANA revolutionary? Is HANA, what, what are the words, right? Those days are gone. You can't control the message anymore, right? Yeah. You can't, you can seed it, you can join a discussion, but it's much more about content curation than right. it is about content 
creation these days. Right. And I think that's okay. 